friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Lindsay from Treehouse Schoolhouse. On today's episode, I'm going to be taking you guys through a whole walkthrough of everything that we have chosen for our homeschool, all of the curriculum and all of the guides, all of the activities that we plan to do with my three children. My youngest child is just turning three in August, so he is only going to be invited in very gently and be included in some of the things. The majority of what I'm going to show you today applies to my six and eight year old who would be entering first and third grade. That being said, as home educators, we do not put them in grade boxes and we simply progress through curriculum as it makes sense for each child. As long as they're being challenged and they're progressing, I'm good with that. We choose to do most of our learning in family style way, which means that I try to use as much as I can teaching my two children together, slightly adapting it for each of their needs. All right, you ready to jump in? Okay, so first up is Bible. During breakfast, my husband leads our Bible time. We have used many devotionals over the years, and this year we are going to be continuing the ology. When we're finished with theology, we're going to go back to one of my favorites, our 24 family ways. We did this in the past and I'm ready to do it again and refresh their memory and also include my three-year-old. Along with our 24 family ways, we're going to be using the scripture sets from my shop. Every scripture in this book that we are asked to memorize comes with, in the scripture sets, you have a full page, you also have an index card, you also have copy work and other games, cut and paste activities. So we will be doing the scripture sets along with our 24 family ways. All right, let me show you a little peek inside of both of those. So this is the ology and this book goes through these different topics and there's each, each entry is a short reading and some scripture. And then from there, my husband just does some discussion and prayer and we choose one of these verses for the week to memorize. And our 24 family ways, like I mentioned, this is my favorite. 24 Family Ways has 24 ways that you would like your family to make a part of your culture, the culture of your home. So here are some examples of some of the ways. We love and obey our Lord Jesus Christ with wholehearted devotion. In our family, we choose to be joyful even when we feel like complaining. And so I'll just show you super quickly. Um, for each family way, there is something to do for five days a question to ask, some scripture to look up, um, a way to discuss it, and some prayer prompts. So we do that for all five days, and there's also a scripture to memorize here that we use our scripture sets to help. So this one actually happens to be this one, and so for the scripture sets, I have a full page. I also have copy work, and I don't have it all here right now, but there, there are a few more activities that go along with the scripture with each scripture set. So we will be doing the scripture sets alongside our 24 family ways. Next, I'm going to show you guys morning time. So for morning time, we gather all together. My baby kind of wanders around, my three-year-old is there, and my six and eight-year-old. And this is the time of our morning that we do our beauty subjects, and I try to include my three-year-old as much as possible. So the first thing we do in morning time is our, our traceable calendar. This calendar is from my shop. And what you're gonna see here is you're going to trace the numbers with a dry erase marker. And then you're gonna see the date and time chart. And over here, they circle the day, the month, they write the date and they do the time. And then you have the weather and the temperature and the clothes that they should wear. So I, I love these morning time menus that I slide all of these sheets into. And my three-year-old will also have one and he'll probably just doodle on it. So first we always do that. The next part of morning time are going through our beauty subjects. This year I have chosen to create Treehouse Nature Study and I'm going to use that for the rest of our morning time. 
So in Treehouse Nature Study, we're going to do um, the folk song, the hand rhyme, the poem, and the picture study, and then we're going to read one book or two from the Nature Study book basket. This section right here is what we're going to do for morning time. So you can see here that for the folk song, we're going to click the link to Spotify, and we're going to sing along using the lyric sheet, and this will be in their morning time menu. Then we're gonna do the hand rhyme and we're gonna click to YouTube, which they'll see themselves and me doing the hand rhyme, or we may just do it since we'll know them. And this will also be in their morning menu. For poetry, there is also a display sheet and it will be in their morning time menu and each day in morning time, there will be some way for them to interact with the poem. So we'll do this section in morning time, either doing a poet study or um, doing the copy work. So we'll do whatever it says here for poetry. And then for picture study, there is a picture for each week that coordinates with the nature theme. And so each day we'll have a way to interact with the picture. And we'll do this during morning time. And a lot of this my three-year-old can enjoy as well. So he'll be involved with any of this that he would like. For Nature Study Book Basket, for each week there is also a book list. And I am going to choose a book from the book list that my littlest guy would enjoy. And I will read that during morning time. After morning time, we take a little break, the kids do their chores, they get dressed for the day, and then we gather for our lessons. For lessons, my three-year-old is nearby playing. He might jump in and paint or draw, but this is most of the time that we do individual lessons for my six and eight-year-old, and then also most of it together. So let's start with the individual lessons. The first thing is phonics and spelling. Both of my kids are very strong readers, but we still do some phonics work that they can do independently that um, helps with spelling and decoding longer words. So I love Explode the Code. We've used this for a while, and this is what we're going to be using again this year. For spelling, we're actually not using a formal spelling curriculum. I was using one. I found it unnecessary because the amount of spelling that they're gaining, spelling skills that they're gaining doing copy work and written narrations, and we threw in some dictation this year, um, that has all really benefited their spelling, and I just don't find it necessary to use a spelling curriculum. So this is what Explode the Code looks like. I have lots of levels. We just progress through these books. I'm just gonna show you what one lesson looks like. I love that it's simple illustrations and they just work on one thing at a time. So they just copy the word and circle it. And then over here, they read the word and they circle what matches. Over here is spelling. So they'll see the picture and they'll have to choose each piece and then write it. Here are some sentences, they read and check yes or no. So it's very simple and it's something they can do independently. My children normally do two to three pages of this each day. And so we really, really love this. So that is what we're doing for phonics and spelling. So they both have their own levels of Explode the Code. And then the other thing that's an individual, independent um, curriculum is their math. And this year we're switching math curriculums. We are trying Math UC. I've heard such great things about it. I'm so excited to jump in. It is a DVD lesson and then workbook. And so I got both of them their own level. I got a little mini DVD player for the table and they're gonna take turns, one doing phonics, one doing math, and then switching. So for my six-year-old, she's using alpha and my eight-year-old is using beta. Let me show you a little peek inside of those maths. So this is what Alpha looks like. It has the DVD with really short lessons, and it also has these manipulatives that you are supposed to use alongside the DVD and then when you're working out the problems. They may only uh, watch one video a week, and then the rest of the, the week they work in their workbooks. So I will do a full review of this curriculum after we give it a try for a while, but this is just very new to us. I don't know a ton about it yet. Um, I will be updating you guys though on this, so. 
The other thing that my children do independently is independent reading. For both of my core curriculum, which I'm going to share in a minute, and uh, Treehouse Nature Study, which is my other core curriculum this year, there are book lists that are very extensive and awesome. So I fill up a book basket every week from the library with books on history and books on nature, and we have a designated time in our day where the kids use books from that basket to do independent reading. On top of that, both of my kids love to read. I'm always collecting books and they read all day long um, without it having to be a formal thing. They read chapter books, fiction books, picture books. So independent reading is really important at this age. Now I'm gonna show you guys what we do for our together lessons, I like to call them. The first thing is language. Our main curriculum this year our core curriculum and uh, the nature study curriculum are both full of language activities. So we only do a little bit of extra language arts, which would be from language lessons for today. This is from my father's world and they have gentle lessons in here about grammar and sentence structure. They also have some poems and picture study, which we kind of just quickly look at or we, um, we just enjoy, we don't you know, memorize because we're doing so much of that in morning time. But I just really love this very simple book. We're almost finished with grade two. We're gonna move on to grade three when we complete it. Okay, now it's time to tell you all about our core curriculums. The first one is Adventures in US History. We are not even halfway through this because we take our time, we stretch it out each week to two weeks sometimes. I do not use every element in Adventures in US History. What I do use from this book is primarily sometimes the Bible. I use everything in this history section, almost always the book basket. They have an extensive book list in the back and this is where I get those from. Their music study is also excellent. And that is about it. Sometimes they, they have a read aloud that we do that coordinates with what we're learning in history. So they have a daily lesson plan. I love this curriculum. You can absolutely uh, just use this. I just choose to pick and pull from it. And so I pull from this. I also have been pulling a little bit from the Playful Pioneers by the Peaceful Press um, because they're, that curriculum is based around the Little House on the Prairie series, which Adventures in U.S. History also reads a lot of those books. So I've been pulling from that as well. And then honestly, I piece together my own, my own resources um, using the themes in this book. I just love their book list, so that is primarily why I use My Father's World Adventures in U.S. History, is for their timelining and their book lists. So um, that is our one core curriculum, and then of course our other core curriculum this year is Treehouse Nature Study. So during our together lessons, we do um, language arts. We do any readings from both history and nature. We do narrations. We do notebooking for both subjects. And then we do any projects for both subjects. So for history, we have hands-on projects and then also for nature study. So in Treehouse Nature Study, there's a nature connection at the bottom each day for each week uh, surrounding the theme. So for example, on Monday, um, on the autumn equinox week, it has you doing a nature walk with this. So this would be something we would do kind of at the end of our school day and we'd bring the three-year-old along, um, read over the autumn bucket list and add your own ideas. So this is something we would also include him in. So it just kind of depends on what the activity is, on if it's something he's gonna be involved with. Um, on Wednesday and Thursday, the na nature study notebooking, this is a little um, more advanced. And so we're gonna be doing this towards the end of our lesson time together. And then on Friday, an autumn equinox tea party of course he would love to be involved with that so we'd be baking together and doing that all together but at the bottom each day of your lesson plan you're going to find that nature connection and so they are also our handcrafts and investigations and experiments so that is how um, we're going to be including our nature connection so lastly is our loop subjects a loop subject for me personally is simply something that is kind of an extra that we don't do every single day, but we either rotate through them or I just decide which one we're going to do each day. 
The loop subjects that we're doing this year are sign language, and I'm using a resource from Signing Times Classroom Edition. It's a digital download. There are videos, there are flashcards and activities. And I'm, then the other one is music study. So for with Adventures in U.S. History, I mentioned they have music study. I love their music study. That is what we do for that. My children are also uh, possibly taking piano this year, so that's exciting. And art. This year, uh, of course, we do art projects and also notebooking includes art. But this year, my kids are also taking a homeschool art class in our little downtown um, once a week. So that's going to be the, primarily the, the bulk of our art lessons. And then practical skills and handcrafts. These things are very much involved in both of my core curriculum. Adventures in New Has History has projects and crafts, and so does Treehouse Nature Study. If there's anything additional I want to add, like sewing lessons or anything like that, I would consider that a loop subject that we don't do every day, but we just kind of throw in whenever works. And then lastly is typing. This year we're adding typing and I am using Keyboarding Without Tears from the company Learning Without Tears. I'm really excited to do this. We might just do it once a week, maybe twice a week, whenever it fits in our schedule. So that is everything that we're using this year. I hope you found that helpful. You can look below and check out all the links to all the things that I mentioned. And you can also find a link to a blog post where I detail it out in that way. I hope that you enjoyed that curriculum overview of everything that we're using this school year. If you have any questions, always reach out and definitely check out all the links below where you can find all of the resources that I mentioned. You can find where, where you can purchase them. And also I posted a blog post that share, shares all of this in detail that you can also read there. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more.